uh, because I've told you that we are left like this week, I'm going to give you uh, two assignments that is assignment A and assignment B, right? To cover up that, uh, uh, that, that three hours gap that we have credit hours gap. So it's going to be a makeup class, right? And uh, for that, I'm going to upload two links. First one is uh, this link that we're going to have the session today which is um, half of it is about the theories of uh, gender and then half of it is uh, about ethnicity and social network in uh, we, we we are left with one more um, a chapter which is gender politeness and i'm going to give the link of um, link that i have already taken with bs students right it's the link with bs students it will give you a brief idea of gender and politeness and how it works because we have already talked about gender it's it's been third or fourth week that we are talking about gender right gender and language so i hope it's clear to you the idea is clear to you i've already given you theories which i have not taught uh, all not not taught all uh, all those theories to be as students as well but at least it, it will give you an idea so i'm going to give the link over there and you can listen to that lecture, but that lecture is recorded for BS students. I'm telling you once again, I've taken it with BS students, right? Fine, man. Okay. Um, I'll give you a brief view of those theories that I wanted to discuss with you. There are some theories that um, uh, are there for, you know, when it comes to gender and language or uh, related to uh, women's or um, uh, men's language or the kind of language that they use, right? The first theory is the deficit uh, theory. And anyone who knows about this theory? No? Pardon, ma'am? Anyone who knows about deficit theory? No? OK. Uh, as this word suggests, right, um, it's, it's like small. Right, something which is uh, which is not you know uh, given, which is not uh, in a large in number. So you can see that um, there is some kind of um, factor of um, uh, something which is less, something which is which is uh, maybe which is not uh, you know um, a lot in number. This factor is involved in that. And when it comes to deficit theory in relevance with language and uh, gender. Then we say that this in this theory, uh, they believe that the language of women is um, is not as good enough as of as language of men, right? Even though women uh, copy men's language, but still there is some um, there are certain factors that they are unable to copy completely from them, and that is why their language is not. Um, complete and not good enough as it is of men right so this is what deficit theory uh, talks about though there are um, disagreements regarding this deficit theory many disagreements and you can uh, study those those on your own if you want to go into detail of that right one of the um, uses of Lakoff's view um, who states that you know uh, there is little uh, uh, there's there's like there's gender inequality which we have already discussed in previous chapter in gender inequality that happened when women express their uh, language and that occurs because women are not given uh, those um, equal rights as of men or those uh, equal opportunities uh, that of men so uh, women are mostly associated with home or or they they don't go out for work and that is the reason that they uh, their language is not good enough as men because men are using that language in so many contexts and where females cannot use that language and that is why this this uh, this aspect of of uh, women's uh, or men's language gender based language covers um uh, uh, deficit theory right then we have another theory which is the dominance theory. We have already discussed dominance theory a little bit in the previous chapter and that uh, dominance theory is that uh, if you remember machismo, we discussed about uh, macho and machismo, if you remember in the previous lecture. 
and yes, in in that we already talked that men are uh, men exercise more power as compared to um, uh, women and um, because females are not exercising any power even in uh, politics as well as in culture or in every aspect of life and that is the reason that um Uh, that the female's language is not equal to that of men's language or they both are not you know um equal if, or or they are using different languages because uh, there is inequ- uh, inequity of power relationship between men and women because females are not um, female are, females are not dominant in the society but men are considered dominant in society and this is one of the reasons according to dominance theory right now keeping this in mind that when you are conducting a research and that research is in socio linguistics and specifically in gender uh you have to keep this thing in your mind that you cannot randomly pick theories especially in your thesis you cannot randomly pick theories you have to be sure uh what is your area of exploration or identification in uh, that of um your in in your research and then you will choose the theory according to that you can use mix of these theories as well right that is if you think that there are two or three or four factors involved in that you can also use um a mix of these theories and that would become a theoretical that would become a conceptual framework for you you can also use any one of these theories if um you think that uh this uh, this theory most fits your study so theories are chosen based on um based on the way uh, it it works in uh, in in your theories in in your uh, research so what is your research question what are you trying to explore and according to that you are going to choose your uh, uh theory right so in uh, when it it's dominance theory you can see the difference that uh, it talks about power relations and power relation means that uh, men and um, women do not exercise equal power in the society because they don't have they are they're not they're not given equal power so their uh, language use is also um, it would also not show these aspects of um, equal use of uh, um, language however this study was all this this theory was also criticized and some uh, uh, some uh, studies argued that uh, the theory is using very simple terms of power because if you because you people haven't studied cda so you don't uh, uh, any one of you who knows uh, something about cda or power or no yes ma'am yes please yeah Yes, yes please ma'am. yes please tell tell me can you explain so, that over simplified form of power how can can it be explained here a critical discourse analysis is used as a separate discipline in order to mm-hmm. uh, analyze text from a linguistic perspectives that how people use power hegemonic language or rhetorics to control others because power not by force power here means power of language for example how these uh, let's take example of uh, trump how he was using language or how biden or how imran is using language to control rest of the uh, nations and it is with language with uh, with the help of which we control nations and others so using power with the help of language we control others because it is fun with which we can uh, encapsulate people or with which we can destroy people for example if we talk about mm-hmm. obama a lot of researches have been done from a uh, cda point of view over his speeches because the moment he came mm-hmm. with the power of his language mm-hmm. he he united the entire america even muslims christians every nation but the moment trump came just with the language he separated even his own nations uh, his own united states the he is yes. only the, the the usa of my people so it is basically not the power the power that is uh, by, by israel over palestine the physical power the hot power power with the language vocabulary word selection diction of a vocabulary mm-hmm. yes yes correct uh, yes haris yes ma'am 
Yes, explain. Explain CDMM. No, explain how power is, you know, um, oversimplified in dominance theory and, you know, how this term power is misunderstood. If you have studied CDA, you must know. No? Okay. So, um, uh, as uh, Fahim uh, said that it's, you know, language the way you, um, uh, the way you exercise power. Uh, this is one aspect of uh, CDA that we talk, uh, in, you know, that, you know, it's through language that we exercise power. But there is this one another aspect of it that I keep on repeating saying to everyone and, and that is that power does not mean oversimplified form of power is when I say that um, if I have physical power, it means that uh, I exercise power over the other person. Or if society gives power to men, it means that men are powerful. Or if, um, if we say that, you know, someone is a politician, they exercise power. But power is way more complex than people think it is. Power can be, um, for example, if a person who is not exercising any power, any position, any anything like that, but still, uh, there are other ways of exercising, um, exercising power means the way you manipulate someone if you have this uh, this power of men or for example we talk about crocodile tears when it comes to women this is this thing is so powerful though women is con women women are considered weak in our society but still they exercise power in so many ways if if they are standing in a place where they haven't done where, where they are actually the culprit of uh, doing something and they instantly change themselves to a victim they can do that but in our society men cannot do that right so power according to different critics of this theory that power is oversimplified in the dominance theory they think that power is only which is associated with uh, you know something that society has given to men but if we look into detail um, we see that you know women exercise more power in our society than as compared to men well, there are ways to exercise those powers and it is different from you know context to context so female um, ha female has a, a female has got power at home right so uh, the concept of power in dominance theory is oversimplified or you can say is used in the stereotypical type right uh, like for example uh, we say that the the person who can exercise power physically or the power of money these are the things which are which come in the traditional concept of power but power is way more um, complex than uh, just these simple terms. I hope you understood. Okay, I'm left with 10 minutes in this session after which you are going to join um, through the same. Who joined my class? Who's waiting in the participant? Okay. Uh, then we have, we're done with dominance theory. Dominance is done, yes. Okay, radical. Radical theory, um, as uh, in, in the, uh, this theory was, this theory stemmed from um, Sapper and um, a Worfian hypothesis and Orwell's view. And we all know that, um, the way we as human beings or people living in a society we we view this world through the language right the way we use this language and the way we express ourselves that is how we view um, this world so for example if i'll give you an example which is not related to only uh, okay related to women fine 
if you remember the case of um, uh, the case of Kandil Baloch, so uh, the, uh, the in the case of Kandil Baloch, uh, the way she was represented through language, we got this view that women are, you know, some like she's a bad person. She is not. Uh, she's doing bad and instantly after her death everything changed everything changed we uh, we consider her we can we started considering her a victim we started consider so the way we express um our views uh, or the way we use uh, uh language uh, regarding any aspect we actually um we actually see the world like that. Right from the beginning, um, people think that women are followers, right? So according to um, this theory, we say that women are followers and that, that they only imitate the language uh, which is created by men. And, and this is something which is um, perceived, not just perceived, uh, you, can, you can see that there are there are researches where we can see the proof that women are um, considered as low minds. Women are considered who uh, who cannot think on their own, and men are considered more intelligent as compared to women. And these are the things which are forming the concepts that we have regarding females and we have regarding men. Though I would say that, you know, my, this, these are my personal views, no research involved. But I believe, personally, I believe that men are so naive and so stupid. Sorry to say, men are so naive that if a woman, uh, if a woman wants them to do something, they would do it. They would do it, but a woman has to know how to do, uh, how to do things with that right how to do how to play with the language and they say women men are strong they are not strong they are so weak emotionally extremely weak so these are certain views that we have regarding like right from the beginning uh, we have regarding uh, men and um, men and women and this is what makes uh, this um, view of uh, language and gender as well that uh, the views regarding females the way we represent it it means that whatever they say is wrong whatever they do is wrong that is reflected in uh, gender and uh, language as well right then we have difference theory now in um, this very word difference theory uh, shows that you know um, there's difference uh, between the language use of men and women and boys and girls. Why? Because according to difference theory, they have their separate subcultures. Like they belong to completely different cultures. And that is why we have this male subculture and female subculture according to which we use uh, language. And because the way we use language is the representation of our culture and our values and that is why we see that if male in difference theory according to difference theory if there is um if there is a male subculture and if there is female subculture so the use would also be different the way females use the language in according to their own culture and the way males use language according to their culture give me a minute please Okay, so um, where was I? Okay, yes, here. So, uh, so the way um, females uh, are using language and the way males are using language, these are two different subcultures. And then you can, uh, there are similarities of difference theory with the others as well. That, for example, if it is subculture, so obviously in those subcultures, um, one is dominant, the other is not. And based on that, their languages are uh, different and all in all linguistic aspects, in all linguistic features, right? 
uh, which means that which we have already discussed for example pronunciation and the way females move towards more standard form and all that this theory was also criticized that um, uh, uh, because uh, because you can they are living in in um, in one um, in 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 one social group they are living together so we cannot just label them as you know two subcultures because one cannot work without another but yes at the same time um, men and women because it's about culture so in our society the when these two subcultures are the part of one culture men and women are not considered equal so as a part of one culture um when we have a uh, female culture and male culture subculture female culture is more suppressed uh, whose mic is on please switch it off uh, female culture is more suppressed and uh, male culture is more dominant because they are unequal right okay then we have the former the the reformist theory i always say formist theory okay um formist theory is i guess a theory of literature uh, okay the reformist theory uh, the in the reformist theory reformist theory is a very major theory just like we have sociolinguistic in uh, sorry just like we have uh, what do we call it i forgot the name um functionalism or structuralism right because functionalism and structuralism these all are those um, like we have these theories and schools of thoughts which were which has their impact of uh, which had their impact on different uh, fields of study same is the case with uh, the reformist theory and the reformist theory is majorly the political theory which brings major reforms so you can say that uh, we are only looking at one perspective of the reformist theory and that is um, uh, language right so within the reformist theory because of uh, because of reformist uh, theory we can say this this feminism started as well so um the reformist theory says that uh, you can see that uh, it has some um influence of feminism in that and then we look at the sexist language sexist language is the language which is um which is which is the the like we use different uh, words for uh, male and different words for female and there are certain words which are completely um which are completely associated with males as compared to uh, females so for example when we say nurse so this word nurse is actually used for in our society is used for females right so when you say nurse so the first thing that comes to your mind is um in our society first thing that comes to your mind is that it is like um female but then you add male nurse to that because um uh, it's like we don't have male doctor but we normally use female doctor because doctor is a word which we associate normally with um men these are the things which are the part of the for, uh, 